Let's make a face part four with React components and ES6 JavaScript. We'll discuss React components, React props, JSX transpilation, ES6, which is ECMAScript version six, background, just some background knowledge about ES6, ES5 functions versus ES6 arrow functions, variables, ES5 var versus ES6 let and const, and finally, ES6 destructuring. ES6, by the way, stands for ECMAScript version 6. ECMAScript is another name for JavaScript. You'll find that there are various versions, 4th edition, 5th edition, 6th edition. 5th edition is what I consider to be old school JavaScript. This is the kind of JavaScript that you write since 2009. Between 2009 and 2015, the JavaScript that you see is ES5. var square equals function of x returning x times x. This is ES5 JavaScript. You use var to declare variables and you need to use the return statement and you always need to use curly braces with functions. So if we define that and then we call square of, let's say, 4, you return 16. In Chrome, to open the JavaScript console, you can click on these three dots and then go under More Tools and select Developer Tools, which you can also open with Control-Shift-I. You can type any JavaScript in here, console.log, hello, JavaScript, and then hit Enter to run it. Any errors that occur in the files that you edit will also show up here in the console, so it's very useful for debugging. The sixth edition is ECMAScript version 6, also abbreviated ES6, and it's also called ECMAScript 2015 or ES2015. One of the biggest improvements in this version is ES6 modules, and that's what lets you write this import syntax. Other changes include using const and let to define variables instead of var, and also this really sweet syntax for functions, namely the arrow syntax. const square equals a function where x is the argument and the return value is x times x. This is what you would write in ES6. You can leave out these parentheses. You can leave out these curly braces. And if you do, you can leave out this return statement. And this implicitly returns whatever the expression is. If you have a large expression that you want to return, you can put it in parentheses, and this is common practice with JSX, with React. But anyway, this is how I would write square in ES6. And it does the same thing as the other one. See, we can invoke it square of 4, and it returns 16. So that's the meaning of ES6. Back in our code here, I'm going to start refactoring this to use React components. And by the way, we already have one React component, and it's defined as a, an ES6 arrow function that returns some JSX. And by the way, when this JSX gets transpiled, because JSX is not part of JavaScript, we can take a look at the generated bundle.js to see how it gets transpiled from JSX into ES6. See, here's our app component, and this is actually the code that runs. React.createElement SVG, and then all of our attribute values get passed in like this. So I just want you to be aware that JSX doesn't actually run. It gets transpiled into this, and then gets run. So what this actually is, is a function that returns an object returned from react.createElement. This is called virtual DOM, virtual document object model. And React takes care of making sure that the actual DOM on the page mirrors your intended DOM, the virtual DOM that gets returned by this function. But anyway, back in index.js, let me start refactoring. We've got all of our logic sort of jumbled up inside of index.js. We've got variables that are, you know, global to this module, and we're not really using the component infrastructure that React provides. 
Just looking at this, I have no idea what each of these different things represents. I would much rather see, you know, eyes, mouth, component names that have some kind of semantic meaning. And usually the app component sort of orchestrates all the other components. It doesn't directly render these DOM elements like this. So I'm going to go ahead and start refactoring this to take advantage of components and modules. The first thing that stands out is this circle. When I just glance at the code, I have no idea what this represents. What I would prefer to do is say background circle, perhaps. And this is what it looks like to use a React component. But it needs to be uppercase, like this. Because if it's lowercase, then React JSX sort of interprets it as a native kind of a DOM element. But if it's uppercase, it should be a defined component that you have. So let me define the component now. I'll say const background circle equals a function that returns in parentheses the JSX that I had cut from before. There we have it. We have defined a React component and used it. One thing that doesn't quite feel right about this component is that it refers to these variables that are defined in this scope here. In order to make this component independent, we can pass in these things as props, React props or properties. I'd like to make it the responsibility of the outer component to calculate the radius and then pass it in to background circle. So I'm going to cut this code here and put radius instead. And we can get radius from props. And we can access it like this, props.radius. And this is currently broken because we're not passing in any radius. Let's pass in the value for radius to our background circle component. And that can look like this, radius equals and then in curly braces, we can put any JavaScript expression. And here I'm going to paste that expression that I had from earlier. And boom, it works. This is how you define React props. Radius is a prop that's being defined as this value. And then we can access it as props.radius inside of this function. This could be simplified, though, by using ES6 destructuring, which looks like this. Instead of declaring this argument, we can use these curly braces and say radius in here like this, and then just refer to radius like that. To make sure this is crystal clear, let me just show some examples of this. Let's declare an object called person. First name Jane, last name Doe. So we define this object, and then we can access person.firstName like this and person.lastName like this. If we want first name and last name available to us as sort of local variables, we could extract them like this. const first name equals person.first name. const last name equals person.last name. And now we have first name and last name defined. So we can just confirm that by saying console.log first name comma last name. So there we go, Jane Doe. The problem here is that this is kind of verbose, and we see that verbosity in, in a React context with props.this, props.that. We don't want props.this and that all over the place. One way to solve that is to put all the props dot in one place like this. But another solution, cleaner solution, is to use ES6 destructuring. And that looks something like this. const first name comma last name equals person. This does the exact same thing as these two lines together. If I run this, I get an error because I'm using const. And when you use const, you can only define these things once, and they can't be mutated. They can't be changed after the fact. See, if I say const foo equals 5, and then I try to say foo equals 6, it doesn't work. But if you want to change something, that's where you need to use let. Let, uh, let's say bar equals 5. Then now, since we used let to declare it, we can say bar equals 6, no problem. 
So that's a little detour explaining the background of these ES6 language features. And this is why they're useful in refactoring React components. That's all for Let's Make a Face Part 4 with React components and ES6.